Hello everyone, welcome back to the course Expansive Soil. Today's lecture will be the 22nd lecture of this course and we will be continuing with this the treatment of expansive soil and today's topic will be the treatment of expansive soil by inclusion or confinement. As I explained before, the there are four main objective of any ground modification that is to increase the shear strength, to reduce the compressibility, to control the swelling and shrinkage behavior and to control the permeability and reduce the pore water pressure. So, all these objectives has to be achieved using all these four techniques of ground modification. In the previous classes, we learned about the various mechanical methods, hydraulic methods and chemical methods. In today's class, we will learn about the methods which include the inclusion or confinement by which we can achieve the ground improvement of expansive soil. So, this method can involve the soil nailing, geosynthetic and the ground freezing. So, on these three topics, we, I will be discussing in today's class. First of all, I would like to start with the geosynthetic. Geosynthetic is one of the most uh, versatile and most widely applicable method of ground improvement. Due to its uh, various shapes, various sizes and different uh, product related to geosynthetics, it has been used quite widely for ground improvement. And when we talk about the geosynthetics, the geosynthetics are made of two terms. One is geo which relates with the earth of which we need to improve the soil or we need to improve its performance that is the it refers to the end use associated with improving the performance of civil engineering work involving the soil. The second part made of synthetic that is the material from which the geosynthetic is made of. So, therefore, the second part refers to the material are exclusively from man made product and when we combine together we get the geosynthetics. So, geosynthetics is a man made product which can be used to improve the engineering behavior of the soil. When we use a geosynthetic, generally it has basically two aims to perform, one to perform better and to be more economical than the other methods. When we use geosynthetics, mostly it performs five major functions, one is separation, reinforcement, filtration drainage and containment. So, we will learn about all these uh, different uh, functions of geosynthetics as well as different types of geosynthetics in this class. The advantages of using geosynthetics over other material is it is a non-corrosive material and its lifespan is quite more in comparison to other material. It is highly flexible, it uh, occupies less volume, it is very light in weight and also it is very easy to transport it and store it. The installation technique is very simple and also the method of construction or the speed of construction is quite high when we use the geosynthetics and we can make it more economical as well as environmental friendly and also it is provide a very good aesthetic look to the structure. So, these are the basic uh, advantages of using geosynthetics. When we talk about different type of geosynthetics, the geosynthetics material are available in wide range of products. So, we will look into all those products one by one. The first one is geotextile. Geotextile is a textile kind of or fabric kind of product which are permeable and it is made of polymeric textile product in the form of a flexible sheet. And here we can see these are the different uh, geotextile material. And the main advantage of using geotextile material is it is a pervious in nature that is a permeable in nature that means it is porous to liquid flow and this porosity can vary to a large extent. When we use this geotextile, it can perform four different functions like uh, separation, reinforcement, filtration and drainage. This geotextile can be made like woven geotextile, non-woven geotextile or knitted geotextile. Sometimes natural geotextiles are also be made. Those are made from jute or coir. So, those are known as jute geotextile or coir geotextile. Next is the geogrid. Geogrid is a planar polymeric product consisting of mesh of 
net like regular open network of intersecting tensile resistance element which are known as ribs. So, these are the ribs and these are connected integrally to each other. This uh, geogrids can be uniaxial. If it stretched along its length, then it will be uniaxial. If it stretched both in longitudinal as well as in transfer direction, then it will be known as biaxial. And between these ribs, there will be openings. So, this opening is known as aperture. And this aperture holds the soil particles in between them. And therefore, it pro produces an interlocking to the particles. Next is the geonet. Geonet is also a planar polymeric product consisting of regular dense network of integrally connected parallel sets of ribs overlying similar sets of various angles and it will perform one of the four discrete functions such as separation, reinforcement, filtration and drainage. And these are the openings or apertures of geonet and if we compare with the geonet to geogrid then we could see the aperture sizes of geogrid are quite large in comparison to the geonet. So, geonet is a dense network of ribs. Next is the geomembrane. Geomembrane is mostly impermeable sheet like structure and generally it is made of synthetic polymer materials and because of its low permeability, it is used to control the fluid migration in a, in a project act as a barrier or liner. So, due to its impervious nature, mostly it is used as a liner material as well as a barrier material. And main function of this geomembrane is the containment. And it can be used at various locations where we need an impermeable layer such as a barrier layer inside an earth dam or as a liner in a landfill. Next comes the geo cell. A geo cell is a three dimensional honeycomb structure which is permeable and a geo cell can be defined as a three dimensional permeable polymeric honeycomb or wave structure assembled from geo grids. So, here we can see it can store a large amount of soil particles thereby providing a resistance to sliding. The next comes the geoform. Geoform is created by polymeric expansion process resulting in a foam that consists of many closed but gas filled cells. So, this is an example of a geoform. These are very light structure and also used for a lightweight fill. In terms of volume, this is quite large in comparison to the other product of geosynthetic. Next comes the geosynthetic clay liner. This geosynthetic clay liner is made of geosyn geosynthetics and in between two geosynthetics, layers of bentonite will be sandwiched. So, this is a geosynthetics, this is geotextile and this is a bentonite which is expansive in nature. And because of presence of bentonite, the geosynthetic is very impermeable in nature or it, it has a very low value of hydraulic conductivity. Therefore, it can be used as a liner material at the landfill. And these two geotextile can be stitched together by needle punching or by stitching or by physical bonding. Here we can see this is a upper geotextile, this is a lower geotextile and in between the bentonite clay is present and an adhesive is also present which will hold this the upper layer and lower layer along with this clay particle. If it is a needle punch then it will be there will be upper, upper geotextile, lower geotextile, the bentonite clay and it will be stitched by the needle punched method. Then it can also be stitched like in this way. So, this is geosynthetics which can be mostly used as a impermeable layer. The different geosynthetics are made from different polymer. So, for example, geotextile can be made from polypropylene, polyester, then polyethylene and polyamide, whereas geogrid can be made of polyester and polypropylene and high density polyethylene, whereas geonet can be made of medium densely polyethylene and high density polyethylene, whereas geomembrane can be made of high density polyethylene, linear low density polyethylene, then polyvinyl chloride and polypropylene, whereas geoform is made of the EPS. 
when we use the geosynthetic it can serve different functions say for example reinforcement function in a reinforcement fu function a geosynthetic performs as a reinforcement by improving the strength of the soil and due to their inclusion the strength of the soil will increase and the earth which will be re reinforced with the geosynthetic material is known as reinforced earth and the soil reinforced with geosynthetics exhibit a higher compressive strength and higher tensile strength here we can see this is an example of an earth retaining structure and this is a potential failure surface now if we include a layer of geosynthetic so that will increase the strength of this structure quite significantly when we use a geosynthetic material mostly it performs in a three way that is shear or sliding pull out and membrane so these are the three reinforcement mechanism of the geosynthetic which is acting as a reinforcement material next comes the separation in most of the structure we can see a soft soil present below the subgrade layer these are the large subgrade which are made of granular fill and this is a soft clay so due to repeated dynamic loading coming from the the wheel of the vehicles this large large granular fill can goes into the soft soil thereby this will degrade the pavement here you can see in this case this is a sub pavement without any separation layer or any geosynthetic layer and because of this uh, movement of this large granular fill over here we can get an uneven surface now we can improve the pavement by include a layer of geosynthetic this geosynthetic will act as a separation layer here we can see this is a geosynthetic layer of geosynthetic and this geosynthetic is acting as a separation layer and this will separate the coarse particle from this soft clay so by definition under this function the geosynthetic prevent the intermixing of adjacent dissimilar soil and the fill material so this will prevent the pumping of the fine particles into this coarse granular fill mostly this is used in case of a highway or railway embankment next comes the filtration under this function the geosynthetic material allow the movement of water with a limited migration of the soil particles across it plain so here we can see this is an pipe without any layer of geosynthetic as a filtration layer now what happens when there is a flow of water takes place and when there is an absence of filtration layer then the soil particles can goes into this structure and thereby it will starts to clog this pipe and if we provide a geosynthetic layer then it will prevent the migration of this so fine soil particles through it but it will allow the movement of water so therefore it will prevent the or minimize the flow of fine soil particles or only it will allow the flow of water and it will act as a filtration layer so thereby it can prevent the clogging of the particles so here we can see this is a soil layer and here we are providing a layer of geosynthetics as a filtration layer now this geosynthetic layer will allow the movement of water and it will allow a limited movement of the fine particles across it thereby it will act as a filtration layer so when a geosynthetic filter is placed adjacent to a soil base a discontinuity arises between the original structure and the structure of the geosynthetic this discontinuity allows some soil particles particularly particles closes to the geosynthetic filter and having a diameter smaller than the filter opening size to migrate through the geosynthetic under the influence of seepage flow for a geosynthetic to act as a filter it is essential that a condition of equilibrium is established at the soil geosynthetic interface as soon as possible after the installation to prevent the soil particles from being piped indefinitely through the geosynthetics at equilibrium three zones may be generated which are known as the undisturbed soil the second zone is a soil filter and the bridging network a soil filter layer which consists of progressively smaller particles as the distance from the geosynthetics increased and bridging layer which is a porous open structure 
here you, here you can see this is a prising layer once the stratification process is complete it actually the soil filter layer which actively filters the soil particles so when we provide this geosynthetics it will form a three layers one disturbed soil soil filter and bridging network like this which will allow the some migration of the soil particles and the movement of the water particles through it next comes the drainage under this function the geosynthetic allow the movement of water through it we know that the presence of water is detrimental to many of the structure in the presence of the water the pore water pressure will be developed and if those water are not removed then that will bring the instability to structure so in as a drainage layer the geosynthetics allow a clear passage to the water along it so here in in this case we could see this is a backfill material and a retaining wall and the water which is coming to the structure can be drained out using a geosynthetics which will, which will act as a drainage layer and ultimately it can be removed from these weave holes thereby it will prevent the development of the pore water on the backfill the next function of a geosynthetic is a fluid barrier or containment some of the geomaterials are very impermeable in nature say for example geosynthetic clay liner or geomembrane due to their impervious nature this gcl or geomembrane can act as a fluid barrier or containment where we need to store the water say for example in a landfill liner we don't want the leachate to migrate into the soil thereby we can provide a layer of geosynthetic clay liner or gcl which will act as a barrier between the leachate and the ground water and therefore it prevent the migration of the leachate into the ground water similarly we can use a geomembrane to provide an impermeable layer to store water like this one so this can help in prevent the migration of the liquid as well as the gas so if we look into the various function of different geosynthetic material the geotextile can act as a separation function reinforcement function filtration function and drainage function whereas geograde can act as a reinforcement and drainage function geonate can act as a drainage function geomembrane and geosynthetic clay liner can act as a containment system whereas geoform can act as a separation function there are various applications of geosynthetics particularly it is most widely used for retaining wall or slope stability in a retaining wall the geosynthetics is mainly used as a function of reinforcement here we could see this is a backfill and layers of geosynthetics has been provided and this geosynthetics or presence of this geosynthetics increases the strength of the soil and it resists the lateral earth pressure and thus maintain the stability of the backfill similarly it can act as a filtration and drainage as a secondary function on the retaining wall and mostly woven geotextile and geogrids with a high modulus of elasticity are used as a soil reinforcing element in geosynthetic reinforced retaining wall so in this we can see this is the layers of geosynthetics which has been used the next comes the embankment when the embankment are constructed on a soft soil geosynthetic can be used to increase the the bearing capacity of the soil and also it can serve as a reinforcement drainage and separation or filtration function generally geotextile geogrid or geocomposites are used when we use the geosynthetic as a reinforcement function it will increase its factor of safety when we use this one as a drainage function it will help in dissipate the pore water pressure thereby accelerate the rate of consolidation and when it use as a separation function it will prevent the intermixing of the embankment material and soft foundation soil so in this case you can this is a this has been used as a vertical drain this is a layer of geotextile and it is layer of granular soil is here here it's acting as a separation layer or separation function here it's acting as a drainage function and also it can act as a 
bearing or reinforcement function. Next comes the foundation. General geosynthetics can also be served as a reinforcement material to improve the bearing capacity. Say for example, in the case of abutment or it can be used or a pile foundation here embankment or this is an abutment. In this case, layers of geotextile, geogrid, geocell or geocomposite can be used as a reinforcement material. In this diagram, we could see layers of geogrids are been present which is acting as a foundation material to improve the bearing capacity of the soil. Here also a layer of geogrid as a reinforcement material is present in pavement due to the dynamic load coming from the vehicle, the granular particles present on the soil subgrade can penetrate into the soft layer. So, this is a soft layer and this are the stone aggregates or granular particle and due to the wheel load or repeated load coming from the wheel, this stone aggregate can penetrate into the soft layer. Once this happens, then there will be a deflection which will occur and as a result of which the structure may get failed. So, when we use geotextile over here, this will act as a separation layer. So, it will prevent the intermixing of this stone aggregate and the soft soil thereby it will not allow the movement of this stone aggregate into this soft soil. So, in this case the geotextile and geogrid can be used for this purpose and also geosynthetics can also be provided to serve as filtration and the drainage function, but mostly it can be used as a separation layer to prevent the intermixing of the granular particles or migration of this granular particle to the soft soil. Similarly, this uh, geosynthetic material can also be used for railways. Again, if the rail is resting over a soft soil and we have the ballast here, due to this repeated loading, the ballast can migrate into this soft soil. And also, there will be mud pumping can happen and because of this um, mud pumping, the subsidence can occur. And when you provide a geosynthetic layer, it will act as a separation layer which will prevent the intermixing of this ballast into the soft soil. So, in this case geosynthetics can be used as a separator between the soil subgrade and the ballast and it can be used to prevent the filtration of the soil pore water rising from the subgrade. So, this will prevent the filtration of the soil pore rising from the subgrade and also the presence of geosynthetics prevent the mud pumping and the subsidence of this layers. Next is the landfill. In landfill geosynthetics particularly in the form of uh, geosynthetics clay liner, geomembrane are used to provide an impermeable layer. Mostly in a landfill liner, the waste products are stored and this waste material with time produces leachate. And if this leachate migrates into the groundwater, the groundwater will be get contaminated. So, therefore, we need to provide layers of geosynthetic clay liner which will act as a barrier layer between this waste material and the water, thereby preventing the movement of leachate into the groundwater. Not only geosynthetic clay liner, geomembrane can also be used. This is geomembrane can be used as a barrier layer at landfill site. Similarly, geosynthetics can also be used as a separator in a landfill cover system. So, this is a landfill particularly if we look into the diagram, this is a landfill liner system and on the top of that there will be a cover system. So, in the cover system also we can provide a geosynthetic material which will act as a separator. So, this is all about the different geosynthetics and their functions. So, this geosynthetics are more widely used because of their a large application and also availability of large type of geosynthetics material and also we can modify the product as far as the requirement. So, therefore, the geosynthetics has been used in a huge scale in many ground improvement method. The next comes the soil nailing. 
soil nailing is a process of reinforcing the soil using nails. These are the different nails which has been different into the soil. So, this soil nails are rigid bars which are pushed into the boreholes and subsequently it will be filled with grout material and then it will be covered with a facing. The main purpose of soil nailing is to increase the tensile and shear strength of the soil and restrain the displacement. The basic concept of a soil nailing process are to reinforce and strengthen the existing ground by installing closely spaced steel bars called the soil nails into a slope as the construction proceeds from the top to bottom. The construction will be from top to bottom. First, the top soil will be reinforced with a soil nail. Then once this is done, then second and third and when we look into a soil nail, it will be generally consisting of three things. One is a tendons, this is a tendons, the main bar, then the centralizer, this is the centralizer and a grout material. This central reinforcing bar are generally 15 to 46 millimeter in diameter. This is a tendons, these are the PVC centralizers. These are generally placed at a regular interval of 1.5 meter to 2 meter along the length such that the grouting can be uniform throughout this nail. In this diagram we could see this is a grouted soil nail, this is a reinforcing bar or the tendon, these are the centralizer and this is the grout and this then connected with a bolt and not and bolt and then a facing has been provided. So, reinforcing action are developed through the soil nail ground interaction as the ground deformed during and following the construction. The different sequence of a soil nailing process are first the excavation of the slope. In this process, the soils are excavated in lifts to accommodate at least a single row of facing panel. In this diagram, we could see first it will be excavated to have a working platform. Generally, this is 3 to 5 feet in depth and this will be unsupported cut. So, in the first step, the excavation will be performed to go for the first layer of the soil nailing. Then the nails will be driven in the second step. So, in the second step, the drilling of nail will be carried out. So, in this case, we can see this is a soil nail will be driven into the soil. Once the soil nail is driven, then it will be grouted using a concrete. So, in this third step, the design nails are inserted into the holes and grouted to develop a strong bond between the soil and the nail. Once the nail has been grouted into the soil, then in the fourth step, a facing will be provided. So, this is a facing which will be provided using a nut and bolt connection to the tensile bars. The nails are tightened by nut bolt connections so that the tensile bars force near the facing can be mobilized. To confirm the perfect con contact between the back of the facing panel and the soil surface, the gap between the facing material is filled with injecting a cement slurry. So, once this process is completed, then subsequent layer will be constructed. Say for example, once the first layer is done, then the second layer in this case again the excavation will be carried out and in the, in the second layer after the excavation is carried out, the soil nail will be placed, then it will be grouted, again a facing will be provided and then the facing will be tightened and then the sides will be filled with the different uh, concrete mix. Then once the second layer is over, then the third layer and fourth layer and the final layer will be carried out. So, once all the layer has been finished, then a final facing layer will be provided like this, which will cover all the facings of the different nails. And in this also, in this step also, a foot drain will be provided at the bottom. Generally, the soil nailings are applied for retaining structures slope stabilization, stabilizing tunnels, construction of abutment. 
there are different advantages of soil nailing this is more economical method in comparison to other methods and it can result in saving a approximate amount of 10 to 30 percent in comparison to the other methods the equipment which are used are very simple and light materials and it can be adopted to different site conditions and the performance wise the maximum lateral displacement at the end of excavation is less than 0.3 percent of excavation depth it gives a very good structural stability and also it is suitable during the earthquake so these are the different advantages of the soil nailing method the next method is the ground freezing technique in the ground freezing technique the water present inside a soil will be freeze using different techniques so this method is known as the ground freezing ground freezing is a process of making water bearing strata temporarily impermeable and to increase their compressive and shear strength by transforming the joint water into the ice this is generally used to provide structural underpinning temporary support for an excavation or to prevent the ground water flow into an excavated area sometimes this is also used to prevent the migration of the contaminant so for example if the contaminant is present here then the soil around this contaminant can be freeze so that the contaminant cannot move from one point to another point the principles of ground freezing techniques are in this method the water present in the soil are frozen therefore this method is more effective for a saturated soil but in the in the absence of water or if the soil is not saturated then water can be added such that the soil can be frozen and also the effectiveness of this process depends on the temperature of the freezing the water content of the soil as well as the nature of the soil and this is more ideally suited for a fine grain soil such as silt and clay if we look into the process of ground freezing in this process suppose if this soil has to be fr frozen then initially the tubes will be inserted into the ground and then the secondary coolant or the primary refrigerant will be inserted in this tube and this coolant material or the refrigerant material will then solidify the soil surrounding this tubes and thereby providing a impermeable layer in this we can see this is a pipes before the freezing the pipes are inserted then the secondary coolant or the primary refrigerant will be injected through the tubes and that will initiate the freezing process so soil around this tube will starts to freeze and gradually when we decrease the temperature of this frozen material or when we pump more and more this coolant material then more area will starts to freeze and then finally we can see we get we can get an impermeable frozen earth layer surrounding this tubes generally a temperature of plus 20 degree fahrenheit may be adequate in sand but in case of soft clay a temperature of minus 20 degree fahrenheit can be required so these are the different process of ground improvement by inclusion and confinement in this module we learn about different types of ground improvement technique starting with the mechanical method then hydraulic method chemical method depending on the soil condition the requirement we have to adopt any of this method so this is all about this chapter these are the different uh, references used for preparing this lecture and thank you